Right, next is to look at the reactions of amines. Okay, we start with the reactions of phenylamine. So phenylamine will undergo electrophilic substitution just like benzene and phenol. Okay, uh, this bromination is very similar to bromination of phenol. Now let me go to the bromination of phenol from the previous chapter. Okay, this is from chapter 25. For phenol, if we want to uh, do bromination, okay, uh, we bromine water. And what will happen is you get white precipitate of this tribromophenol. Okay. Um, phenol, this OH group is electron donating group. That is why you get a 2, 4, 6 substituted bromophenol. Now, phenol is brominated more easily than benzene. It's because lone pair from one from the oxygen atom is localized into the ring. So electron density in the ring increases. So uh, phenol attracts electrophiles more easily compared to benzene. So why do I have to show you this is because okay, phenylamine also can be brominated more easily than benzene. So for bromination of phenylamine, we also use only bromine water. Now for benzene, we actually use uh, a catalyst okay, and at the same time, you actually have to heat. But this one is just bromine water. So bromination of phenol, bromination of phenylamine, you need only bromine water. Very mild condition, no heating is required. You don't have to use pure bromine liquid. We use aqueous bromine. And again, NH2 will also, okay, NH2 is also electron donating. Okay, lone pair on nitrogen is also delocalized into the ring. So making this benzene has higher uh, electron density, attracts the electrophile more easily compared to just benzene. And you get a white precipitate of 2, 4, 6, 5, bromo. Phenylamine. So this is very similar. Just if they ask you to explain why is it more easily to brominate phenylamine compared to benzene, okay, you use the same explanation for why phenol is brominated more easily compared to benzene. Uh, exactly the same explanation. So, but of course, in phenylamine, lone pair will be from the nitrogen atom. So, yeah, that will be the first reaction of phenylamine. Let's look at the second reaction of phenylamine. Now, this one is very interesting because uh, there is a very unique uh, N ion. Sorry, there's a very unique ion that is formed from this reaction of phenylamine. That ion is called benzene diazonium ion. This is the formula. Okay, benzene diazonium ion. And if there is a chloride ion to neutralize this cation to form a compound, the compound is called benzene diazonium chloride. Yeah. Now, to look at the structure of this benzene diazonium, we look at this picture. So it is a benzene. Okay. Then you have two nitrogen atoms. Two nitrogen atoms. Okay. The word azo here for nitrogen. So you have two nitrogen, so diazo. Neum is because it's a cation. You realize that actually all cations will end with uh, M okay, for the name. So benzene diazonium cation look like this. So this positive charge nitrogen is on the nitrogen that has the four bonds. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So this nitrogen that is bonded Directly to the benzene has four bonds. One, two, three, four. That's why the positive charge. The other nitrogen has only three bonds. So it still has the lone pair with it. No positive charge. So this chloride ion, let's say this is in the solution. Chloride ions are attracted to the positive 
nitrogen, right? Uh, ionic bond between them, so forms a compound benzene diazonium chloride. So how do we get this benzene diazonium from uh, reactions of phenyl amine? We start with phenyl amine. Okay. This phenyl amine will react with HNO2 to form benzene diazonium ion. Yeah, let me rewrite this equation. C6H5NH2. Okay, sorry. Let me erase this. Probably I will just use benzene. I realized that uh, to use benzene, okay, it's easier for you to visualize it. Phenylamine. Okay. So reacts with HNO2. You will get benzene diazonium ion. Okay. Now, in this equation, you can see that HCl is needed because uh, the product here given is benzene diazonium chloride. So, in order to have this chloride ion, so we have this HCl is also being added into the system. So they get benzene diazonium chloride, okay, and then you have the water that is formed. Okay, it is okay if you do not want to use HCl in the equation. Then we have to be more careful with the balancing. Okay, only this ion is formed, and water. So let me try to balance this equation of N N H two. H2O and H2, how many H2O? 1, 2, 3, 3 hydrogen, 2 water. Okay, right, you need a H plus ion. Then you will get okay, 2 H2O. So that would be if without a uh, hydrochloric acid. But actually, most of the time, hydrochloric acid will be there because this HNO2 is actually very unstable. Let's say I buy a bottle of HNO2, but it is very unstable, so um, it won't last very long. So instead of using HNO2 directly, okay, in this reaction, what do we usually do is okay, we mix Sodium and ANO2 is nitrate, sodium nitrate with HCl. Oh, I didn't know it erased the whole thing. Okay, it's okay. Okay. We use ANO2 and HCl together with phenylamine. These two will actually react with each other. And form HNO2. So this HNO2 that is formed in the same system, in the same mixture, will then react with amine to form benzene diazonium chloride. Because when you use this combination, then you have HCl in the system. Uh, and now you will get benzene diazonium chloride. So the balancing is exactly the same like this equation that is given in this slide. Now another thing that I need to mention is the condition for this reaction is actually very, uh, again, very specific. The temperature must be kept below 10 degrees Celsius. Must be mentioned. Okay? If they ask for reagents and conditions for this reaction, is right okay HNO2 temperature less than 10 or you can write NO2 with dilute HCl temperature less than 10 degrees Celsius okay so for the reagents you you can write just HNO2 or you can choose to have these two NaNO2 plus HCl but for both okay whichever reagent that you use temperature must be kept with below 10 degrees Celsius now, why so low the temperature? 
Okay, number one, HNO2 is unstable. So higher the temperature that you have, okay, it will decompose. Another thing that is unstable at temperature above 10 degrees Celsius will be this benzene diazonium chloride. Okay, easily hydrolyzes in water, in the presence of water, the temperature is higher than 10 degrees Celsius. So in order to make this stable, we make the temperature lower, okay, below 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this will be a very uh, special reaction of phenylamine formation of benzene diazonium chloride. Reagent HNO2, temperature below 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, now just now I talked about how unstable this benzene diazonium chloride is, right? Okay, so if temperature is higher than 10 degrees Celsius, will hydrolyze in water to form phenol. Yeah, temperature more than 10, with the presence of water, okay, this whole thing will be gone. Will all be replaced by OH group. So you get a phenol. Now, if they ask, okay, observation for this reaction will be effervescence because nitrogen gas will be produced. Right, if not, okay, uh, you only need to know the product which is phenol. So that will be the first reaction of benzene diazonium chloride. This is actually a very, um, very side reaction of benzene diazonium chloride. Uh, usually, okay, this happens when we, we are not careful enough, we didn't keep the temperature below 10 degrees Celsius for this diazotization reaction. It easily, when temperature is above 10, okay, it turns into phenol, which is what we, we don't want. Okay? We want to get benzene diazonium chloride. So this is a side reaction that happens when temperature is changed. Now let's look at the main uses of this benzene diazonium chloride. You see, we took, okay, we took all the trouble to make this benzene diazonium chloride, okay? So many things they are unstable. We have to keep the temperature so low. So why do we make this benzene diazonium chloride? It is because of the second reaction of benzene diazonium chloride that we want to do after we get the salt. Okay. This second reaction is called a coupling reaction. Why is it called a coupling reaction? Because you look at the product. Okay. It, the, product the product has two benzene rings side by side. It looks like a, you know, a couple of benzene rings, so it's a coupling reaction. So what do we need to react benzene di diazonium chloride with to get this uh, product? Okay, to undergo coupling reaction, benzene diazonium chloride with phenol in the presence of sodium hydroxide. Yeah, this is a reagent. Phenol in sodium hydroxide, again temperature below 10. Okay. Because benzene diazonium chloride is not stable at temperature higher than 10, so we keep it below 10. Add phenol and sodium hydroxide to benzene diazonium chloride, and then a new product will be formed. This, okay, this diazonium salt will form. So how do we get this uh, product from the two reactants? Okay, you see that you have the benzene diazonium chloride. Okay, I just draw it like this. Then you can see how they combine better. Okay, like this. So at the end, okay, these two nitrogen will become the bridge between these two benzene. So you see the two nitro nitrogen. Okay, because of the two nitrogen atoms, so it is. The functional group is the azo group, the diazo group, okay, N and N, okay. Now, initially in benzene diazonium chloride, it was triple bond between the two nitrogen atoms, but in the product coupling reaction became double bond. Very important, uh, they will ask you to write products of coupling reaction. 
lecithin double bond, none of the nitrogen atoms has any charge now, become neutral. And then this benzene diazonium chloride will always attack the fourth position of phenol. Yeah, phenol is one, two, three, four, okay, five, six. Always at the fourth position, unless the question tells you it's at another position. If not, always draw a product. Okay, uh, position hydrogen being substituted by benzene diazonium uh, ion. So you get a compound like this. So OH functional group is still there. Okay, do not remove it. Do not change it to another position. Okay, it is still there. Now, of course, you have other side products also. NaCl. Uh, NaCl is because this Na okay, combined with the chloride ion. And water. Okay, water is from 1H from the fourth position. Okay, together with the hydroxide ions here. Okay, from water. Okay, so why do we make, uh, why do we want to do coupling reaction? Because all the products that is formed from coupling reactions, they have very attractive colors, very colorful compounds. So we can use them okay, to, to dye fa fabric. Okay, They are dye compounds. They all have color. Huh? And one of them, you look at the last one, is actually methyl orange that you use for titration. Okay, Methyl orange is also made from coupling reaction. This will be the structure. Let's look at these three different uh, enzo dyes. The first one is the one that I show in the uh, example. This one. Okay, you have the coupling products. Then you have OH here. Yeah, this is the product for the uh, coupling reaction in the example. Now we can also react. Okay, if you don't use phenol, you can also use phenylamine. In the presence of sodium hydroxide, okay, coupling reactions of benzene diazonium chloride with phenylamine will also occur. Then this is another phenylamine, but of course now the N is bonded to two R groups. This is still a phenylamine, but it is a primary amine. Sorry, tertiary amine. Tertiary amine. And not only uh, benzene diazonium so benzene diazonium chloride can be used. You can use benzene diazonium chloride with other substituent groups like in methyl orange. So in, initially, that benzene diazonium uh, salt has another substituent group okay, at another position. So they will also react okay, with phenol or with phenylamine. So you can change the combination so that you get different colors. Because dye compound can you, you don't just dye uh fabric with just one color, right? Okay. Everyone has preference in different colors. We want to make clothes colorful, fabric colorful, okay, or to dye other things with different colors. So we can change the substituent groups to make different color. This is yellow, this is also yellow, okay. Uh, but methyl orange has different color in, uh, in different pH of solutions. Okay, now I have uh, different questions that I have included in this uh, chapter under reactions of phenylamine. Okay, you can try to draw the products. Okay, this one will be a formation of benzene diazonium chloride by looking at the combination of the reagents. Uh, this temperature is below 5 here, but technically it's still below 10, right? So benzene diazonium will form and when you have benzene diazonium uh, salt here benzene diazonium chloride why benzene diazonium chloride because uh, you have the cl from hcl so this step will be coupling reaction now can you see that you know they don't just use uh, phenol they actually use two six two six dimethyl phenol okay as long as it's still a phenol Okay, it will react with benzene diazonium chloride to form okay, uh, the diazo compound coupling reaction. So try okay, to draw the structure of benzene diazonium chloride here and then okay, the product 
of the cutting reaction. Okay, you you pause this video. Okay, write your answers on a piece of paper. Okay, then only you come back to the recording and check your answer. The next slide will be the solution for this uh, practice. Okay, now let me show you the answer, the structure of the benzene diazonium chloride and also the product of the coupling reaction. Okay, so you check with your answer. Now let me go into detail of the structure of this benzene diazonium chloride. Yeah? So you should draw a benzene and one of the carbon is bonded to N. Now this N okay, has a single bond because bonded to the C with sing uh, okay why a single bond it is bonded to another nitrogen okay why a triple bond this positive charge okay uh this slide didn't show where is the, the position of the positive charge very clearly it is actually on top of this nitrogen with four bonds one two three four okay one having the four bonds has the positive charge so it must show very clearly the positive charge is on which nitrogen yeah in your answer the other nitrogen no charge and of course you can show with the chloride ions okay because in the question you have hcl so hcl will dissociate into hydrogen ion and chloride ions that is why the chloride okay is actually to the positive nitrogen forms a compound benzene diazonium chloride. I cancel this one. Is it allowed double triple bond? No, I don't allow this one. Okay, this will be the best answer. Now, what about the products for the coupling reaction? So you have benzene diazonium chloride, right? Let's go back to the slide to show you in the reaction scheme. Okay, easier to see because you have the structure of the phenol here. So you have your benzene diazonium chloride. Okay, reacts with your phenol. Remember, this will substitute the H okay, in the fourth position. So CH3, CH3. Just follow the question. Yeah? So later, position 4 okay, will be replaced by the diazo group. N, N. Okay, remember just now I told you, right, in the product of coupling reaction, now between the two nitrogen, you have double bond, not triple bond. Okay, OH and the other substituent group should be no change. So, here we go. This is the product of the coupling reaction. So, they will always change, okay, the phenol. They will add more substituent groups. Okay, for the di benzene diazonium chloride, sometimes they have other substituent groups also. So pay attention to that. They mustn't disappear in your products. They should, they should remain unchanged. So they will appear in your products also. But of course, in this case, there are no other. There's no other substituent groups. For phenol, there are two CH three groups. So that's why they appear in your product. Okay, right. See, they mentioned here N, N must be double bond, not triple. Okay, this phenyl azo group must be at opposition to OH. Okay, so if the question didn't mention anything, must be four position. Yep. So that would be the first practice. We go to the next one. So I have another question, okay, it's from Winter 10, I know it's uh, not a very new paper, but uh, older paper will always have a more basic practice, okay. Now, uh, over the years, the question will only get more complicated. I still feel that older papers are very good for uh, practicing purpose. So for this reaction, uh, for this reaction scheme, I want you to draw the structure of the X. Let's look at the reaction scheme. Yeah? Start with phenylamine. Uh, this time you see there is a substituent group. It's an active group at 4 position. 
So phenylamine becomes diazonium chloride and reacts with phenoxide ion. How come phenoxide ion no longer phenol, right? It's because okay, phenol. Look at the we look at the reagents, the conditions again. Uh, benzene diazonium always is reacted with phenol and sodium hydroxide. So phenol with sodium hydroxide will form phenoxide ion. So in this question, they want you to know that okay, this is actually a product from phenol in sodium hydroxide. Okay, that is why. Okay, this is still a coupling reaction. Now, sometimes benzene diazonium chloride, they will simplify it to N2Cl. I don't show you all the bonds, but from N2Cl, you must be able to recognize that it is actually a benzene diazonium chloride. Uh, where is it? Okay, see? N2Cl. Okay, it's actually benzene diazonium chloride. So let me write here. So again, okay, you post the video to write your answer. Okay, write your answer the structure of compound X, which is a product of the coupling reaction. After you have written your answer on a piece of paper or on your devices, then you can come back and check your answer. Okay, this is the structure of the compound X. Okay, I find this question very interesting because uh, from my experience, I realized that students will always uh, continue okay, from the structure of phenoxide ion given they put this one as O negative and A positive. Okay, they didn't realize that actually okay, it will become OH. Now let me go back to the reaction scheme and explain why okay, why it is OH and not okay, the phenoxide. Okay, first, okay, I'll draw the structure of this benzene diazonium chloride. Okay, Cl minus. Now react with the phenoxide ion. was from a phenol right so again this benzene diazonium ion will substitute the H from the 4 position okay so once coupling reaction occur what happened is you have two nitrogen in between the two benzene ring and between the two nitrogen you have a double bond no longer triple bond then here should be O negative and A plus. But you realize that this H is replaced, right? So where did it go? Okay, it will become H plus ion. And this H plus ion will replace this and A positive, okay, and become OH. That is why in the answer, it was H and not an A. This is the tricky part okay, from this question. The rest are actually still the same. Now, one more thing. Okay, mustn't forget the benzene diazonium chloride that we start with has an ethyl group here. So don't remove it. Okay, it should still appear in the answer. So the complete structure of X looks like this. Okay, there's an ethyl group at the fourth position of the benzene diazonium salt. Okay, now I have another very interesting question from Winter 12. Okay, you are given compound G, which is the phenol. You are given the product of okay, the product of the coupling reaction. Now you are supposed to find the structure of the benzene diazonium chloride that was used to make okay, this product with compound G. Okay. Pause the video, write your answer, and then come back and check your answer.
Okay, so now let's look at how to solve this question. I I like to play spot the difference uh game when it comes to organic chemistry reactions. I like to look at the when when I'm given the product, okay, and uh, I'm being given one of the reactions. I like to look at the product and see what's the difference between the product and also one of the reactants given. Now this is compound G. So let's find where is compound G okay, in the product. So I have the OH, I have this substituent group, right? So can you see that this part comes from compound G, this whole thing? Right, this was from compound G. So what happened to compound G is uh, one of the H, this H, okay? Originally, it was a H. Right now, this H is replaced by uh, this whole thing in the product. Let me circle it with another color. Okay. This, this part, okay, originally not from compound G. So, you have two reactants only, so it must be from compound K. So this is from K. So let me just draw this structure. SO3H. Okay. And then I have the N double bond N. You might just copy first from this structure, yeah? So do you remember coupling reaction means benzene diazonium chloride with phenol? So this compound G, obviously, it has LH bonded to benzene. Compound G is the phenol in the coupling reaction. So K will be the benzene diazonium chloride. Benzene diazonium. Chloride or benzene diazonium salt, yeah? Now, in benzene diazonium salt, between the nitrogen must be the triple bond. They will turn into a double bond in the in the coupling uh, product, but okay. Before that, in benzene diazonium salt, it was triple bond between the two nitrogen, and this nitrogen with four bonds has a positive charge. So this is the structure of K. Let's check with the answer, the mark scheme. Yeah, okay, it is correct. This is the structure of K. Now I know in this mark scheme. They simplify this part to N2, but okay, I prefer you to show all the bonds because in some other mark scheme, they actually mention that they do not want you to simplify it to N2 positive. So, because of the discrepancies in the mark scheme, I prefer you to draw to show okay. This part display everything, all the bonds between the nitrogen triple bond and also the positive charge on the nitrogen, the four bonds. Okay, do not do this. Okay, do not simplify to N2 positive. Show everything, show all the bonds, show where exactly is the positive charge. Okay. Now, next I have another question. Okay, this time they only give you the products. They don't give you any of the reactants. I'm going to show you how to solve this by using the first one. Okay, later you solve the second one. Okay, uh, after the class. Now I look at this this dye called alizarin yellow R. They always give name to the dye compound together with the color. Okay, so that means this dye is a yellow dye. When we look at this uh, compound. Remember, coupling reaction is from benzene diazonium. Okay, benzene diazonium salt with phenol. So, with phenol or with phenylamine, 
in this case will be with phenol. Can you see the OH here? Second one will be benzene diazonium with phenylamine. Okay, how do I know phenol or phenylamine? I just look at the structure of the products. So I start finding OH or um, amine group here. This is an amine group, so phenylamine. Now, the example that I'm going to show you is uh, benzene, diazonium salt, and phenol. So, they combine, okay, uh, at, sorry, in the product, the two nitrogen will become the bridge, right, between the two benzene. But before, before they form this product, okay, this part will be from benzene, diazonium, and this one from phenol. The benzene diazonium salt will always substitute the H okay, at the 4 position of phenol. So phenol 1, 2, 3, this is the 4 position. So always split them at the 4 position of phenol. Okay, or the 4 position of phenylamine. Do so not please don't split them like this. Okay, let me copy this. Yeah. Let me copy this slide and teach you and show you what are the common mistakes. Now I realize that um, some students will do it like this. Oh, no. okay. um, let me erase here. Yeah. Oh wait, I cannot erase like this. It's okay. I'll just use another method to erase this. Now let me show you common mistake. Common mistake. I better write this before you think this is the correct one. Now do not split them like this. Okay. Can you see the problem of splitting, splitting them like this? Okay. If you split them like this, this one is not phenol. Okay. It's neither a phenol or nor benzene diazonium salt at the beginning, right? And then this one that you circle is both a benzene diazonium salt and also a phenol, which is not true, right? You know, a coupling reaction means a reaction between benzene diazonium salt and phenol or benzene diazonium salt and phenylamine. So make sure you split them, okay? Correctly, like this. Okay, phenol or phenylamine, four position, okay, cuts the bond. So one part is from benzene diazonium salt, the other part from phenol. This one, one part from benzene diazonium salt, and then another part from phenylamine. Okay, now we have already split them like this. It's time for us to write the original benzene diazonium salt. And also the phenol. So the left hand side part, benzene diazonium salt, right? And O2. Uh, sorry, our box. Okay, should write inside the box. This part will be triple bond and for stiff charge. Now let's write phenol. The original phenol will be OH here with another substituent group COOH. So this will be the original benzene diazonium salt. This will be the original phenol that we use for the coupling reaction. Now, okay, you try to write the benzene diazonium salt and also the phenylamine for this product. Okay. Now you can pause the video to check the answer later. I'm going to show you the answer anyway after this. Okay, this is common mistake, do not follow. And this will be the answer for the structure of the uh, benzene diazonium salt, and also phenol or the phenylamine. Now, there's another very interesting question in part 3. They say in metal orange, okay, which is this compound, in metal orange, is a substituent group in the benzene diazonium salt. They are asking why... Okay, why, uh, why is there a substituent group like this? What kind of effect do 
is a substituent group will bring to methyl orange. Okay, uh, its properties. Okay, uh, they tell you. Okay, the question tells you first. Okay, this group has no effect on the color, so please don't talk about the color and say, oh, uh, because because of this substituent group, methyl orange is orange. Okay, that's not the reason. Okay, the reason is because this part, okay, this part is actually uh, ionic. This SO3 actually has a negative charge on the oxygen and the Na has a positive charge. So this part is ionic. You know, ionic uh, bond easily, easily um, broken in water. So the reason of adding this substituent group to the benzene diazonium chloride is because okay, it will make the molecule more soluble in water. We want to use methyl orange as indicator okay, in titration. And in titration, we are always uh, doing neutralization between acid and base. And this acid and alkali, they are soluble in water. So we want an indicator that is also soluble in water. Imagine using an indicator that is a precipitate, that is a solid in that is insoluble in water. It makes the color change very hard to observe, right? So adding this side group will actually make the metal orange molecule more soluble in water. Okay. Of course there are other physical properties also. It will increase the melting point because ionic compound has ionic compounds have higher melting point compared to organic compound but I, I still prefer the first uh, first explanation okay it makes it more soluble because that will um, that fix the purpose of, of methyl orange being the indicator in a titration uh, better right so there will be answer to this question and the next topic will be air mic, so I'll stop my recording here okay, to make it a part two recording.